All right, let's go. And we are black. Hey, Majeho. I think the time has come for us to diversify our openings a little bit. Let's return to what we started the initial speed run with, which is an accelerated dragon. Knight c6, d4, c takes d4, and g6. Let's play an accelerated dragon. It's been it's been a long time, and I just want to remind everybody of you know the basic ideas. The accelerated is what I recommend to most people in this rating range. It's a great gateway into other Sicilians because it's really easy to understand. There, comparatively speaking, isn't quite as much theory. Um, and the ideas are very clearly defined. So essentially, we're putting emphasis on developing very quickly. And, and the first couple of moves are super natural. So here we play knight f6 and get our knight out. And depending on what white plays, we either castle or we play d6, or sometimes we go for d5 and one fell swoop, bishop c4. Okay, so bishop c4, we continue our development by castling. Notice that I'm not actually pushing my d-pawn out just yet. Uh, in order to preserve maximum flexibility. And this shines through. In case white castles, uh, you will see why we don't play d6 straight away. Knight d e2. Okay, that is a bad move, I think. And we have a way to challenge white immediately if we want to. Now, we could play d6. It's not a terrible move, but we could play d6. But if we really want to be challenging, if we want to be testing... What move can we consider here? And and this is something that you should always pay attention to when your opponent is a bishop on e3. This is just an automatic thing that that you you have to be aware of from you know out of the corner of your eye. Nobody has named the move yet. I'm very surprised you guys aren't thinking in this direction. Knight g4, yeah, knight g4. Knight g4 can be really nasty because if the bishop moves. How can we follow up? How can we put pressure on f2 and b2 at the same time? And when the c-pawn is gone, good job for us. When the c-pawn is gone, this is another thing that you should be fully aware of at all times. Th this is a move that is often very nasty, and that's queen b6. Not bishop d4, that blunders a bishop, but the right idea. Queen b6, hitting the pawn on f2, hitting the pawn on b2. Now, this comes with its associated risk, because we're actually not developing the light squared bishop just yet. So this could backfire on us, but I don't. somehow I don't think it will. I think this will turn out okay. This is a fork. It's a garden variety double attack against two pawns. Now, which of the pawns should white defend? Well, probably white should defend f2. But uh, we're going to take the other one. We're going to take b2. And how do I know that the queen is not going to get trapped? Well, first of all, it's very hard to trap the queen on b2 in general, especially when it has retreating square on a3, which... Obviously, is where we want to go, win a3. And the queen has a lot of different avenues of escape. That's the bottom line. The queen has a bunch of different ways that it can escape the attacks of white's pieces. Through a5 or c5. And in general, when you're trying to judge whether the queen, you know, whether to take, let's say, a pawn on b2, this is how you have to think about it. Okay, what are the queen's escape routes? And can those escape routes be taken away in one move. And here, the answer is clearly no. I mean, the queen has too many too many ways that it can escape. So I don't know if white's getting that much activity for the pawn. I mean, where exactly is white's activity? I feel like we're pretty solid. Knight d5, our opponent, though, playing very, very well. I think this is, this is definitely the best move. And we have to be cautious here, obviously, because there's, there's, there's ideas and there's pressure. How should we go about consolidating here? Well, there's a couple of approaches that, that we could take. One, one idea is to bring this queen back to civilization with queen c5. Another idea is to bring the queen back to d6. Unfortunately, that blunders the queen due to knight takes e7 check. On a similar note, knight g to e5 looks like a really good move because it gets the knight back from g4 where it's a little bit loose and it did its job there. I, I like knight g5. And it hits the bishop and it gets the knight into the center. It does a lot of good things at once. And in, in the event of rook b3, we always have the c5 square for the queen. Notice that it is important for the queen, for the time being, to be guarding the e7 pawn. Queen d6 threatened mate, but knight takes e7 as a check, and it removed the defender of the queen. So queen d6 would have lost the queen. Bishop b3. Okay, now we have to identify what it is about this position that's not permitting us to consolidate fully. What are the annoying aspects of white's position well if we pose the question that way we would love to play a move like d6 right 
We'd love to play d6 and open up the light squared bishop. That's pretty logical. But we can't do that because d6 intercepts the queen's defense of e7 and it blunders the pawn on e7. That's not great. So we could play b6 and try to fianchetto, but that doesn't really cure the underlying disease here, which is that white's got these two incredibly strong pieces. And I think we need to chase at least one of them away and possibly even both with a later e6. Let's start with h6. That's the most flexible move. Depending on where the bishop goes, we will decide on the subsequent course of action. I actually think we should go g5. Let's just chase that bishop away altogether. This will greatly unburden our position, allow us to consolidate more freely. Bishop g3. Now we can play d6. Now that move is possible. e7 is pretty well defended. We can also try to play e6, but you guys know that I'm I'm very reticent about combining g6 and e6 because it weakens all of these dark squares in our position. So I, I don't see the need to chase this knight away just yet. I, I think we should start with d6. And I'm not worried about, I know some of you are probably thinking knight c7 looks scary, but it's not. We just go rook b8 and, and there's no follow-up. If we had a rook on e8, yes, th that would be a fork, but it's not. What about, okay, h4, good move. So our opponent trying to open up the king, which is exactly what white should do here. Um, Let me think about this for a second. This is not going to be an easy game. Let's see. So queen c5 takes, takes, queen d2. This isn't actually a phenomenal move. I underestimated it, to be honest with everybody. Okay, let's go... Let's go bishop g4. Let's get our bishop out. Let's get our bishop out. Now, the, the reason I didn't want to go g4, and maybe somebody could explain to me, by the way, our opponent is disconnected, but why didn't I want to go g4? What does that yield? What does that allow? Why not g4? Well, g4 weakens a bunch of squares that white can occupy with his knight. So g4, there's knight f4, and then knight h5, and that gets incredibly nasty. You see what I'm saying? That that f4 square becomes weak. It becomes a base of operations for White's knight. And I just don't like the look of that. Not that I love the look of this. And I, I, I underestimated White's attack here. I'll be full disclosure. But that doesn't mean we're checkmated. There's a long way to go before, before we get checkmated here. We have a bishop on g7 that's excellently placed for the defense. And we also still have the possibility of going e6 and chasing this knight away from d5. Queen d2, good move. Okay, now, will, will we have a couple of approaches here? I, I think we have a really interesting move. We have a really interesting move. We can go queen down to a5 and try to force the queen trade. But there is a tactical problem with the move queen a5. Does anybody see what that tactical problem is? We're still going to play it. Uh, we're still going to play it, even though it contains an issue. Yeah, knight takes e7 check is possible. But if you calculate a little bit further, knight takes e7 check. We go king h7. And because we're attacking white's queen and we're also attacking the knight, I think that forces the queen trade. So we give back our extra pawn, but at the very least, we're not going to get checkmated. Now, knight takes e7 check. You might be like, wait, doesn't that blunder the knight? Well, no, look, this knight defends the queen. Okay, our opponent doesn't do it. Our opponent goes queen e3, which is kind of music to my ears. Now I think we have an opportunity to either go queen c5. Yeah, I actually think queen c5 might force the queen trade. I actually think this might force the queen trade because... Well, I guess it doesn't. I guess I guess why does queen back to d2? But now our queen is nicely centralized and white's queen is tied down to the knight. So after queen d2, we could probably already go e6. Yeah, let's go e6 and chase the knight away. Oh, this guy is good. Kind of a weird game. It's like a weird structure. Maybe I shouldn't have gone pawn, pawn hunting. I, I had a bad feeling about it, but I decided to do it anyway. If knight e3 happens, we have a pretty sexy move there, I think. So start thinking about what black's options are after knight e3. I'll, I'll show all of the tactics after the game. I know there's a lot of stuff here that's a little confusing to people. Just bear with me. I'll show the the tactical lines after the game. Here we're focused during the game. We're, we're focusing on you know the moves that are actually played. So don't worry about it. Ninety three. Okay, I think we have a really cool move here. Really cool move here. And it's not just a a gimmicky move that 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 you play because it looks cool. I actually think it does something. 
no, no, queen e3, <laughs> no. Bishop f3, yeah, I think bishop f3 is the move. Now, the bishop is untouchable because of the fork, but the point is very simple. We're attacking e4. And we just want to take another pawn. We want to take the pawn on e4. So this pawn is not easy to defend. Because we have such a nice knight on e5, and the knights are supporting each other, normally bishop takes e5 would be a reputation, but here the other knight just replaces it, and once again the bishop is untouchable. So this move makes sense. A bishop f3, posing more problems. Obviously we, we have to take back, otherwise our whole king side is shattered. Yeah, knight c3 does technically defend the pawn, but it brings the knight onto a tremendously vulnerable square. Okay, bishop e5, we play knight e5. This is all according to plan. And now I think we're in phenomenal shape. Knight g3. I think our opponent played correctly here, actually. Maybe we're not in phenomenal shape. Let's see. Because our bishop might end up getting trapped. This is a funny situation. Let's, let's take stock of, of what's happening here. Our bishop is not hanging. But obviously, as you can understand, if white moves the queen away, then our bishop could end up being becoming a liability because white will be able to capture it. So I, I'm thinking of a move here that almost solidifies the bishop. Yeah, I like the move g4. So this solidifies the bishop. We're preparing to sacrifice that bishop. We're preparing for a scenario where white can take on f3. And in that case, after knight takes f3 check, at least our knight is going to be anchored by the pawn. The secondary idea of this move is to involve the dark squared bishop and bring it to h6 in order to intensify the pressure on white's position. I don't know if this move makes sense. Bishop h6, it pins the knight on e3. You know, it, it adds heat to the position. Wow, this is very impressive by our opponent. Queen c1. And now our bishop is trapped. Our bishop is trapped. But what do we do in such a situation? Well, all we can really do is roll with it and sacrifice the bishop. So let's go bishop h6 as we planned. Now, originally I said we should take with the knight, but now I've reconsidered. And this is a very instructive moment. I think 99% of people would take with a knight here. But we're actually going to take with a pawn. We're actually going to take with a pawn. I feel like the pawn is a much better attacker here. I mean, I think this should make sense to you guys intuitively. Although, we'll discuss this more deeply after the game. This pawn is a really dangerous attacker. It, it serves as an anchor point uh, for various mating ideas. No, I'll explain. I'll explain more deeply after the game. It's just that we're in time pressure. I actually think that we're not worse here. We're down a piece for two pawns, but white's king is in trouble. Knight g4, that's a great idea to go knight g4 here. Another plan is to move the king aside and then go rook g8 and start attacking down the g file. That's another benefit of taking on f3 with the pawn. We've opened up the g file, and we're really the only ones who can benefit from that. This, The more I look at this, the more unpleasant this looks for it, because look at how nicely our, our pieces are placed. And this knight on g3 is a really lame piece. It's just sort of sitting there. It's restricted by the pawn. White's also going to lose on time. No, this is pretty high-level stuff here. Queen e1. So unpinning the queen. Sorry, unpinning the knight. Many ways that we can improve our position here. We can go for king h7, rook g8. Yeah, I like king h7. I don't see why we can't go like this. Get the rook into the game. Get the rook into the attack. h7 and rook g8. Why not king g7? Because that would block the... The G file. We have to physically get the king away from the G file. Why not king h8? Because at the very least, here the king is protecting the bishop. In in some eventuality where, I don't know, white's rook lands on h1, it's a good idea to, to keep the bishop protected. And this is already panic. Knight c4. This blunders the knight in one move. But the hilarious thing is that we don't actually need to take it. I, I think we have a better move than knight takes c4. Who can tell me what it is? And the first thing that I see when knight c4 is played isn't the fact that the knight is hanging. It's the fact that the f2 pawn is now pinned. Okay, well, what is the f2 pawn defending? Well, more precisely, what is it now not defending the knight on g3? So we can start with the intermediate move rook g8, threatening the crushing rook takes g3 check, which is basically mate, because once this knight disappears, white's king is left all alone. So I think our, we have our eyes on a prize that's bigger than the knight on c4. Again, not playing automatically. And here, once again, is there anything inherently wrong with taking on c4? No. But, you know, we can just go for checkmate here. Knight g4 looks crushing. Okay, king h3. Now, our opponent is 7 seconds, so we're obviously going to win on time. But let's try to play objectively. 
In such positions, it's important not to get overwhelmed by the abundance of moves you have and, and to plan properly. Like, what is it that we actually want to do here? So at least to me, the main idea should be to get the queen somehow to the king's side. But if you go queen g5, you're not threatening anything. Queen g5 looks impressive, but where is the queen going from there? So I'm seeing a little regrouping where we get the queen not to g5, but we try to get it to h6. Oh, what's stopping the queen from getting to h6? Well, it's obviously the bishop on h6. So what if we move the bishop first somewhere, and then we maneuver the queen through g5 to h6? But if we're moving the bishop, we don't just want to bury it on f8. That's dumb. We at least wanted to participate in the attack. So let's go bishop f4. Probably not the only move, but I think it might be the cleanest. e5. Ooh. Oh, we also have knight takes f2 check, by the way. There's, I don't think there's anything wrong with rook g5. I think that's also winning. And knight takes f2 check basically ends the game, I think. So a couple of things to discuss. We went back to the accelerated dragon, which I haven't played for a while. Great opponent. Knight e2 I'm not familiar with at all. And it, it may be that in retrospect, we should just go like d6. Oh, it is, it, there is one game here in the database that I see. Maybe we should just go d6 and then like... You know, I'm not going to delve too deeply into the into the ideas of this position because this is a whole separate thing, and you can find a lot of that in my first speedrun. But, you know, a6, b5 is, is possible here. Or bishop d7, rook c8. Yeah, the Marozzi is good against the accelerated, but it's not like it refutes the accelerated dragon. And most people at like a 1600 level don't really play the Marozzi. But we decided on something more principled. Knight g4, bishop g5, queen... Queen b6, castles. This, by the way, might be a good game to analyze with the engine. Let's analyze this game with the engine. I'm going to make an exception to the rule. And mostly it's because of how complicated this game is. And I know that there are a lot of mistakes. So I think it's a it's a pretty good idea to, to have the engine on, at least in the background, for just for this game. It's something I don't usually do. Okay, so the accuracy is decent. Um... Okay, so knight g4 is good. Queen b6 is good. Queen b2 is good. So this actually, the computer approves of this. Knight d5 is a mistake. And this is a very bad move. Knight g5. So it's, blunder I think is a pretty strong word. So it go, Because the position is still equal after knight g5. The best was to play, let's see, e6. Oh, actually it did want us to play e6. Interesting. Yeah, I was worried about knight c7 rook b8 and i was very worried about giving up the d6 square like knight b5 ah but now here we just have queen c5 and this is a fork we're just forking the two bishops here yeah this i missed i, I forgot that the, that the bishops are undefended so yeah we're actually threatening queen c5 which is a fork and white's pieces are all discombobulated so the simple e6 essentially ended all of white's compensation um, but this isn't a blunder. Knight g5 is not a blunder. It's a mistake. And this is why I hate, I hate using engines because people don't understand what a blunder is. Blunder is when you actually, you know, blunder a queen or blunder a piece. Knight g5 is more like a serious mistake. Um, not that the semantics matter, but there is a distinction. And, and people overuse the term blunder. Oh, Magnus blundered, Geary blundered, when it's just like a relatively small inaccuracy. So bishop b3, h6, okay, bishop h4, g5, the computer likes the way we played this, d6 it doesn't like. Um, I guess d6 is overly committal. I mean, again, I see that the computer wants us to go for e6. Queen c5, wow, knight c1 for some reason, and now e6. I guess I, I went by general principles here a little bit too much. I just didn't want to play e6 and, and weaken the d6 square like this. So... Let's see what the problem is with d6. So, ah, f4. f4 is very nasty for black. I saw this move. I didn't think that... Frankly, I didn't think this was that bad. But now that I look at it, and the knight's coming into h5. Queen's potentially coming to g4, although not at the moment. Yeah, and somebody proposed the move a5. That's best in this position. Oh, no, it's not best. It's, it's, it's a mistake. That's weird. It, it's giving a5 here, but once you play it... It reassesses it. Now, this is an exceedingly complicated position. A4, bishop c2, bishop g4. This is literally anybody's game. 
But I guess the computer's point is that Black's King is, is very, very weak here. Uh, but not conclusive at all. Not conclusive at all. So F4 was strong. Instead, H4 was played. Bishop G4, not terrible, but not great. E6, once again, I just didn't want to make this move. That's the bottom line. This forces the knight back. No, but here I thought white had knight C7, rook B8, and once again I thought he had knight B5, but now we just go queen C5. Knight D6, rook D8, and we trap the knight. So, again, my reluctance to play E6 was not, not good in this game. Okay, so bishop G4... Yeah, it is shallow, but it's it's good enough to to give us a general impression of it's good enough to give us a general impression of of the game, right? We're not really using the engine to to like do anything crazy. You know, I'm gonna set it to unlimited. The engine is obsessed with e6. Okay, so here, it, wow, it wants us to take gh. <laughs> That's a ridiculous move. Bishop h4, but this just shows you how complicated these positions are. It's almost impossible to play the top computer moves here. So queen a5, yeah, white should have gone 97 check and, and gone for this endgame, where I knew that black is probably worse, but I thought this was the best outcome, given how dangerous the position is. Um, so queen e3, queen c5 is good, e6 is good, and bishop f3 is not bad. Uh, but it wants us to play the more simple g takes h4, bishop e2 for some reason, and knight d4, just going for the activity of the knights. But this is a great example, again, of why I don't like using engines. I'm very, I was very happy with the move bishop f3, and I think this probably deserves an exclam. Whereas some other moves I made that the computer doesn't say are a mistake might, objectively speaking, be uh, worthy of criticism. So, for instance, bishop f3 I still think is a good move. And, and that's why you should always take, you know, these computer assessments with a grain of salt. Bishop e5 is a great move. Yeah, so here our opponent found a really strong idea, bishop e5 and knight g3. And the bishop is somehow trapped on f3, which is pretty crazy. And if we go bishop g4, then f3 traps the bishop once again. That's the problem. So I found g4, which is not phenomenal. Oh my goodness, knight ef5 existed. Knight e f5, e takes f5, and now queen g5. Jesus. And then all of a sudden, white is jumping in with all of his pieces. It's still not so clear. Bishop g2. Oh, my goodness. No, the computer needs to sit here. I mean, this is such a complex position. Because now the point is queen f5, there's knight h4 check. Queen h5. What the hell is going on? f4, bishop d5. Knight h4 check. This is craziness. King h1, queen d4. So it looks like white is better here just because of the initiative. But completely irrational complications. So knight f 5 was very strong. Why not knight takes f5? Ah, because of just bishop takes e4. And now we're able to win. Just white's initiative evaporates here. But this move queen g5, very impressive. Delaying the movement of the knight. And so this is why, again, you're seeing again and again, like, why engines suck. Bishop h6 is a nice move. Yeah, and here, gf3 is very strong. So here's the reason why. Uh, if you play knight takes f3, you're allowing king g2, and it's actually counterproductive to allow king g2. Why is it counterproductive? Because white is now ready to play rook h1, and once white gets the rook to h1, white just assembles more beef on the king side. It gets harder and harder to do anything to white's king. On the other hand, if you think about g takes f3, this keeps the king locked in. Keeps the king locked in. King g2 is impossible, and that pawn is a thorn and is, is a bone in black's throat. It's, it's just, like, not possible to coordinate the pieces here. Now, even though gf is not a check, um, it's, it's a much more long-sided move than taking with the knight. And now, yeah, king h7... Yeah, and this is already this is already checkmate. So rook g5, some people were asking, is this good? It's not that convincing, actually. It's not, apparently not that convincing. Knight d2, and a lot of you wanted to do this, but amazingly, after king takes g4, white escapes. This is a ridiculous position, but look at this. The king is escaping through f3. This is not mate. This is 
you're wrong on one thing. This is not meth. Um, this is not mate. King takes f3. There's no way to defend this pawn. I always say that king hunts are the hardest uh, thing about attacking. King hunts are incredibly treacherous. Um, and a lot of people just assume that anything is mate, but the king is a ridiculously slippery piece. That's a Breaking Bad reference. Um, so you have to be very disciplined. I like bishop f4 a lot. And then knight f2. So knight f2 is just another idea of this move. But that, I mean, this game is just incredibly irrational. And if, if you've played a game like this, you know, and you analyze with an engine, you might end up with more questions than, than answers. Um, and more, more questions than you even had initially. Like, what is it that you're supposed to take away from this game? Um, and, well, there's a couple of things, right? First of all, you know, probably from a purely practical standpoint, knight g4 might not have been the best. I, I think it's possible that just d6 is calmer and, you know, a little bit less, less crazy, but it's interesting, I mean, here, I think the main lesson of this game is not to over-apply general rules. I'm constantly hammering home the concept of not going e6 and g6. I'm constantly evangelizing and pontificating about not going e6 and g6 because it weakens the d6 square tremendously. Obviously, as we, as we saw, and largely because white's bishops are undefended, white is unable to exploit that weak, weak square, as we saw. If white gets the knight to b5, queen c5 simply wins a piece. Concrete considerations always transcend these, you know, these general rules. Um, and I, quite frankly, didn't even take e6 that seriously. I just thought it was a very anti-positional move, whereas it was actually the king, to, the key to the kingdom to get rid of this knight asap by allowing this knight to remain on the board uh, in the center. Uh, we complicated the task greatly and. You know, this could have very seriously cost us had white gone f4 and exploded the king side. So, you know, a good a good reminder of, of the fact that, you know, we shouldn't over apply these general rules. But some of these mistakes I don't think are are necessarily such a big deal, like queen a5. I mean, dig, playing g takes h4 is very difficult in this position because that essentially opens up the king side on our own volition. Does that sort of sort of make sense? And I think another instructive moment is is here, not not taking on f3 with the knight, you know, refraining from the temptation to make a move just because it's check. So that's what I have to say. All right, guys, I think this was a pretty packed game, a lot of stuff to to go over there, and you can always find this game in my game history and analyze it on your own. You know, this is this applies to people watching on YouTube as well. You know, if you're not fully satisfied by, by the level of analysis, you feel like you have lingering questions, you can always load this on your own and analyze with an engine and, you know, extract more lessons that way. So that's what I'll say. But for the time being, guys, we're going to call it. Thanks for hanging out. See you guys later.